no. Now, now let's begin our discussion on elementary particle physics. But first, let's discuss what high energy accelerators are. Now, before we define what they are and what they are used for, let's begin our discussion by basically trying to understand why scientists began building these high energy accelerators. So, cosmic rays are basically high energy rays or high energy particles that come from outer space. Now in the 1900s scientists realized that these high energy particles can collide with the molecules and the atoms found in the atmosphere producing different type of things. For example if we have the following particle collide with our nitrogen 14 isotope it releases a proton as well as produces our carbon 14 isotope which is a very unstable isotope. Now through these nuclear reactions scientists were able to produce particles such as beta particles and positrons and then be and they began to realize that protons, neutrons and electrons are not the only type of subatomic particle. Now a strong interest in uncovering all these different type of particles led scientists to develop these particle accelerators in laboratory setting. And since these accelerators basically accelerate our particles to very high velocities and therefore to very high energies, they are commonly known as high energy particle accelerators or simply high energy accelerators. Now, what exactly can these high energy accelerators tell us about our particles and nuclei of atoms? So by accelerating small particles such as electrons and allowing them to collide with other particles or nuclei of atoms, we can gain a deeper understanding into the, comp into the composition and nature of nuclei as well as particles. Now accelerating particles can basically allow us to do two very important things. Firstly, these accelerators or high energy accelerators allow to accelerate the particles to very high energies and that means the particles have enough energy to overcome the electrostatic repulsive forces that might exist between the two colliding objects and that allows those two objects to actually combine combine during collision. Now the second thing that accelerating particles to high energy allows us to do is to increase the resolution and therefore the detail of the images that are produced during that collision. So how exactly does increasing the energy of our particle or the momentum of that particle allow us to increase the resolution? Well, recall the Broglie's hypothesis. The Broglie hypothesized that the wavelength of any particle is equal to H Planck's constant divided by P where P is the momentum of our particle. So P is equal to M multiplied by V where V is our velocity. So we see that the greater the velocity and therefore the greater the momentum of our particle is, the greater this denominator term is and the smaller our wavelength is. Now recall in our discussion on diffraction that the smaller our wavelength is the more resolution the higher the resolution is and that's exactly why electron microscopes which have electrons that have much smaller wavelengths than light microscopes which have much higher wavelengths electron microscopes are able to produce images with a much greater resolution and detail than light microscopes because light has a much greater wavelength than electrons. So to see exactly what we mean by this statement let's look at the following example. So find exactly how small the wavelength gets 
or a particle that is accelerated from rest to an energy of 1.5 giga electron volts of energy. So assume that the mass is that of our electron. So because the velocity is so high, we have to take into consideration the special theory of relativity. So we use the following equation. So the energy squared is equal to the momentum squared multiplied by the speed of light squared plus our mass squared multiplied by the speed of light to the fourth power. So let's rearrange and solve for p because we want to find what p is to solve for this equation, to solve for the wavelength. So p is equal to the square root of e squared minus m squared multiplied by c4 divided by c squared. So let's plug in our values. But before we plug in our values, let's convert our energy from giga electron volts to joules. So we multiply 1.5 giga electron volts by 10 to the 9 electron volts in 1 giga electron volts. The giga electron volts will cancel. And now we multiply by this conversion factor to convert from electron volts to joules and we get 2.4 times 10 to the negative 10 joules. And now we plug in this energy into this equation. We use the mass of our electron and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we get about 8 times 10 to the negative 19 kilograms multiplied by meters divided by seconds. This is the momentum of our object, our particle that is obtained as a result of our high energy accelerator. So now we use this equation. So we solve for lambda. Lambda is equal to our Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to the negative 4 joules multiplied by seconds and we divide that by the momentum of 8 times 10 to the negative 19 kilograms per meter, per meter uh, multiplied by meter divided by seconds and that gives us about 8.28 times 10 to the negative negative 16 meters. So we see that this is an extremely small wavelength if we compare, for example, the wavelength of light, which is about 500 nanometers. So this is much smaller, and so that means this will be able to produce a well-defined image with a lot of detail and a very high resolution.